Welcome to the show, Meeting Interesting People at TV3. My special guest today, Dr. Grigory Friedrich Guzowski. Welcome to the show. Thank you. He's a really special guest because he was the one who watched the show, Meeting Interesting People, where I was interviewing my student, um, Lisa Marie Burnett, and he called to the studio and he asked my phone number and since then we became a good friends and Grigori taking instruction on the Russian language because he's the one who is giving master classes in Russia as the organ player and now I would like to ask you to give a comments of this video we were showing um, before. Well in the uh, first video clip that you had seen is a picture of me playing at my church where I play and conduct in Hingham, St. John the Evangelist Church. And I'm playing a organ mass by Corette. And so you hear the sounds of the full organ and the reverberation, and uh, so you hear a little bit of that. The uh, second clip you saw was a pedal exercise written by Bach. So a composition just for feet alone. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is what was just an excerpt of the piece. So the enti entire piece is maybe oh, uh, a minute and a half long. And uh, the third clip that you had seen was my Russian Slavonic singing group, the Slava Chorale. And the clip that you had seen was our first practice session for the summer. So we was, were sight so reading this year, th this year okay. just a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And we have another practice tomorrow. And uh, so we hope to get venues in the Boston area and other places in the next uh, year or so. So we just began practicing. And the final clip is very interesting because it's a Russian church near where I live. I live in Medford and uh, in uh, Chelsea there is the St. Mary's Russian Orthodox Church. And I sometimes sing there with the choir and uh, I also play the church bells occasionally. So the clip you have seen is me in the tower playing the church bells. And you notice the earphones that right. I have on because of the loud sound. Right. <laughs> and that so it's very exciting. Written music or? Yeah. It's not written music. The uh, Russian bell ringing is uh, a series of patterns that you learn really from tradition mm -hmm. using the various amount of bells that you have. And they ring at different parts of the liturgy or before services in various patterns. And many of the villages have their own specific type of ringing and their own recognizable patterns of bells. So we need to say that um, Dr. Gozatsky teaching at Bridgewater State University, and then you said you were teaching at MIT as well. I had taught and at MIT there for, was, uh, for 10 years. piano classes. Right? That was piano classes, piano right. Classes. And then you run the Music Academy uh, as a founder and a director. Right. And where that is uh, located, in, it's mostly Hingham, right? Mostly Hingham. The Music Academy is a private group, a collaborative of various teachers, mm -hmm. and we don't have a set building or place where we teach, mm -hmm. but uh, I, for example, teach out of my church, St. John's in Hingham. Other people teach out of perhaps their homes or their own churches or schools, and we have seven different teachers teaching a variety of instruments. I myself teach organ, piano, voice, cello, harpsichord, and other people teach different things as well. So I know that you became a Metro resident not that long ago. That's right. So it's like four years ago? About four years. And you moved from Chicago. Actually, before uh, moving to Medford, I lived in Everett and then in Malden. Ah, I see. So, but where did uh, you graduate the uh, conservatory? Uh, well, I went to school at Millican University mm -hmm. and I went to uh, Harvard to study theology. Mm -hmm. And then I studied at uh, Northwestern University in Chicago. University of Illinois mm -hmm. and uh, Eastern Illinois University and then uh, finished my doctorate at Boston University. So there was uh, the as an organist when did you start to um, to learn how to play organ and I know you did special research and one of the composers. Right I started playing organ when I was six years old Wow, which is very unusual since yeah. most people have to play piano for maybe 10 years or more before they yeah. can study organ. 
so that was quite unusual. Then I switched playing to piano when I was in high school, mm -hmm. so I played, uh, start playing, and my first pieces I played on piano were the Chopin Polonaise and A major and very complicated works, mm -hmm. so I missed all of the preliminary piano compositions the most students would have to learn. <laughs> So, so then, it's not a bad thing. <laughs> so then, in teaching, in, in my own teaching, right. I had to go back and review pieces and uh, learn repertoire and through my own teaching so of students. So, six years old, you started to play organ. Where? Yes, at home. At home. Yeah. So we always had uh, instrument at home. Mm -hmm. Then I had an aunt that would teach me to play a little bit, and so she started teaching me and giving me instruction. And after about two years, mm -hmm. I was giving her lessons. <laughs> so that was <laughs> that was interesting. As, yeah, as and well. I know you you mentioned it that you have your own composition for the organ. I do. I have uh, quite a few compositions of my own. Uh, the main uh, my main area of composition is choral music, mm -hmm. and so I write a lot on Russian texts and uh, Russian Orthodox texts in English. Mm -hmm. Then I have a series of poems based on uh, Emily Dickinson's works, and. Uh, so various things like that. And I have a number of compositions that I brought with me. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, I have the St. Gregory Mass that I had written for choir. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the Russian pieces, I have a hymn for Pentecost that I had written. Okay. And compositions like that. Uh, Blessed is he that comes, uh, Dance of Isaiah, mm -hmm. compositions like that. So someone will be interested maybe to use your music, so they need to go on your website. On my website, right. And uh, you can give the uh, information about your website. It's uh, Fred. Right. So the website address is just frederick-guzatsky.com. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so. just my name with a dash in the middle. Right, and we have here to show that the music we were hearing before, um, and this one we were this one we were hearing. Oh, okay. This is uh, my first recording. It was called Comes Autumn Time mm -hmm. and uh, taken from the name of a very famous composition called Comes Autumn Time by Leo Sowerby, a Chicago mm -hmm. musician. Mm -hmm. And so uh, a piece exemplifying autumn time and breaking leaves and falling leaves, colored leaves, so various uh, aspects of autumn. And you have another CD. Yeah, I have one called uh, Frederick Gazatsky Live, mm -hmm. and that has uh, more classical uh, Bach music on it and uh, that type of thing. And I have a disc in production now. It's called Isn't It Romantic, uh, music from the Romantic period. But you need to tell us about this uh, German composer, the organ composer, right? Right, Josef Reinberger right. from Liechtenstein, uh -huh. and I did all of my doctoral research on him. Mm -hmm. So uh, a very famous composer in Europe, but not very well known in America. What, the, what the period is that? Is, uh, he died in 1901. 1901. 1901. So it's like uh, uh, on the border between the 19th century, right. or and mostly 19th century. How long did he live? He uh, from, born in 1839. 1839. So okay. But uh, very beautiful music and mm -hmm. very much known for the wonderful melodies he would create. Mm -hmm. So very mel melodic and uh, beautiful music. He wrote 20 organ sonatas mm -hmm. and a very tremendous output of chor choral music and instrumental music. So when we have right here a book you wrote for the master classes mm -hmm. you're using? Uh, the book is called Gratis Ad Parnassum for the Organist. And uh, translated it would mean perhaps steps to perfection or mm -hmm. steps to Parnassus mm. uh, for the organist. And in there it gives advice about how to play, how to really become an artist. And it's not necessarily just for the student, right. but for the performing musician as well. So anyone at any stage could learn from that. And one of my favorite aspects out of the book are some of the quotations that I have in there. Just short sentences, maybe one or two lines, for example, to play only what is written on the page is the domain of science. To realize what is not written is the domain of art. Yeah, you can read a little so, bit more. So we'll give a little exception. bit more. Yeah. Uh, from an ancient uh, Russian proverb, Pavtorenia Matuchenia, repetition is the mother of learning. So did you use it during your class when you're giving the master classes in Russia, for example? I do use it for all my master classes and mm -hmm. my master classes even at uh, Boston College mm -hmm. or uh, when I would play at, uh, teach at uh, Bridgewater State College. And uh, it's sort of a way that I could be sure of selling my book. I require all of my students to buy it.